time. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting for Tuesday, September 14th, 1999. Uh, the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Uh, moving on, adjustments to the agenda for this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, approval of the August school board minutes that were included in your packet, August 24. Mr. Chairman, I just ask that my name be included on the list of those who are present because I was here. Are you sure? <laughs> okay. I don't remember seeing it. <laughs> We'll, um, we'll make that revision. Other adjustments? Revisions? Okay, they'll be stand as approved. Um, we now have uh, an opportunity to uh, hear comments from our high school student representatives. And if you could uh, start by introducing yourselves. Junior. I'm John Crafts, and I'm a senior. And uh, we'll just be starting off. Uh, the senior class uh, was involved with a big buddy program, which matched uh, the freshman class up with uh, senior in, with the seniors. And this was uh, to make the transition from uh, the middle school to the high school a lot easier for the freshmen. Um, during last year, the freshmen filled out note cards, which uh, gave specifics about their interests and their dislikes about. Um, the high school and what sports they did. And then uh, this summer we matched them up with the uh, seniors the best we could. And um, the program has worked out to what extent I, we don't know yet, but it's made uh, the, the transition, I, I, I know, a lot easier for them. Um, a lot of teachers have uh, commented that they said that the freshmen have been, uh, been pleased with the, uh, you know, me matched up with a, uh, an upperclassman. Um, they speak highly of it. Um, it's a program that, that used to be uh, used to be in the high school a couple years ago, but kind of dropped off. So we thought we'd start it up again and, and uh, make it work. And I think it has. Um, and not much in the way of high school activities have gotten going yet. The clubs, extracurricular clubs, have just really started this week. Um, mock, mock trial, debate, environmental club, and speech will be starting soon. I'm not sure about the other activities. But sports are definitely in full swing, and our teams are doing very well this year. Boys soccer just won about an hour ago. They won their game against Falmouth. Uh, field hockey has a 3-1 record, and they have new coaches this year, which you probably know. And I've talked to some of the players, and they really do like their new coaches. They, they think they're very um, talented, and they're really demanding of the team, but the, I think the players like that. Uh, golf won a match yesterday against NYA. Uh, the girls' soccer won their last game yesterday against Scarborough. Cross country, the girls yesterday, the girls were second to Scarborough, who were the defending state champions. It was a very strong showing for the girls. And the boys were third, but they have a huge team. They have 30 boys this year running, uh, which is the largest team that I've seen in three years. And a lot of them are freshmen, so the boys' cross country team is really going to get a lot better. And homecoming is two weekends from now, September 24th and 25th, Friday and Saturday. Um, Friday night, there's the traditional potluck, and each team does a sort of humorous skit for the other teams. It's a fun thing to go to. And Saturday, there are home games for field hockey, and both boys and girls soccer, and cross country is away at Scarborough. And Friday night, there's going to be the traditional disco dance. And that's pretty much all that's happened so far at the high school, but I think next meeting we'll have more to report as more activities get started. Thanks. That's terrific. Um, any questions? Uh, just one quick one. Uh, uh, with the seniors and freshmen, uh, is that going to continue on for any period um, of time? It was, it was supposed to be for the first week, and whatever friendships um, last or whatever people want to continue could. Um, I'm going to be putting up uh, posters just to mention that 
have you seen your little buddy or your big buddy lately just to try to get people to go and, and uh, find their, their bigger little buddy and to try to start that friendship up again? Yeah, I think that's a great, great thing to do. I do too. I'd like to commend the seniors for doing that. I think it's uh, uh, more than we as a school board or administrators or educators can do. I think uh, initiatives like that are going to be where we're going to uh, arrive at a, at a safe and, and very positive school environment. And you're to be commended. Good job. Thank you. We move on to communications. No. Tom, would you? Just to, to mention a few things that are in here, um, to make note of the, uh, the enrollment data um, and the increases that we're probably going to see, um, especially at the high school over the next several years, um, and the volunteer data in your packet also. I think that program is uh, a lot of time and energy goes into that, and just myself being new looking at that seems to be a, a program that's well worthwhile and a lot of, uh, a lot of volunteers in the schools through that. Okay. Kevin, I know you had a couple of items. I have two items. The first, the uh, Cape Community Coalition is meeting on uh, September 30th at 6.30 p.m. in the community building at 1226 Shore Road. Uh, the purpose of the evening, we are planning a potluck dinner to introduce the community to Jenning McLeod, our VISTA volunteer. We, of course, will be putting on a brief uh, asset building presentation, and the rest of the evening will be spent in celebration of past achievements and talking about where we are moving uh, going forward. Um, the second is Portland Arts and Technical High School. I have the pleasure of chairing the General Advisory Committee this year, and I would like to take this opportunity to invite the members of the board as well as all of the administrators and anyone else who might be interested to tour the facility during a typical day. Um, I'd be more than happy to make individual um, arrangements for you or group arrangements, whatever works. But I do think it's important that we as a board um, and the administrators take a look at that school and look at the opportunities that it offers so we're better able to speak to it. So I hope to see you there. And I, I know, Kevin, we, there was some uh, interest indicated on the part of board members last year. Um, there was some question as to whether or not it might be more convenient for a few of us to go at the same time rather than having a number of individuals. And um, somehow, I, I guess we just, schedule-wise, we just weren't able to pull it off. But I think um, you know, perhaps we could we could, we'd give we it a try. I think we were pretty busy, but I, I believe that um, you know, Portland Arts and Technical is pretty flexible. They love to see board members and administrators. So whatever works for everyone who might be interested uh, will be doable. Okay, good. Kevin, did you say the coalition meeting at 6.30? 6.30, you know, um, in the community building, September 30th. Other communications? Um, I'll move on to the superintendent's report. Tom? We have two items. One is an update on JV football, and I know there was some discussion last year about this, but as you can see from the correspondence, that it's not going to happen this year as a, as a school sport but there is a desire that uh, next year it looks like the numbers will be more feasible to put together a JV team. Um, also, you have in, in your packet um, an intent to take a sabbatical, and this is the first step in the process, um, and there is a contractual issue with forms and a committee that has to be formed, but this begins the process as far as informing the board that there's an intent to take a sabbatical. So there's no action needed on that now. Okay, um, moving right along to uh, principal's reports, and we'll start with um, Pete Dawson at the high school. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to begin my report by adding uh, to your commendations to the senior class. Uh, one of the things that I especially appreciate about the, uh, the Big Buddy program is that that was entirely student driven and initiated. It was a, something that they got talking about last spring, starting to think that maybe it was a good idea, and they were the ones that uh, carried through with it. So I can't help but think that many students were positively affected. Um, in our conversations, uh, we've talked about um, 
you know, often the students have come up and said, do you think it's working? And I'm sure there are situations where it didn't work as well as we would like it to, but there were many, many situations where it worked uh, extremely well. And to me, the important piece of that was the intent from the very beginning. It allowed us to, uh, to take note of it at the opening assembly. Uh, it allowed us to set a tone. Uh, and, and, I, and you could see that the uh, other classes were realizing, wait a minute, if the seniors are, uh, are starting this kind of thing, then we need to welcome the new people into the school also. And I think uh, in my conversations with most ninth graders, I think they have felt welcomed by the other uh, students in the, uh, in the school. So I would uh, add my congratulations and gratitude to the senior class for taking that initiative. Uh, along with uh, that, uh, last spring, uh, Belinda Snell in particular, uh, along with Katie Lisa, brought a uh, a concern to uh, my attention, that the, the concern being that in our attempts to um, work with the ninth grade parents and ninth grade students in the traditional fashion that we had, which had been the, always been the freshman barbecue, which was usually in about the second week of school, and it was a very pleasant uh, social evening. But uh, Belinda and Katie's uh, concern was that it was short on information, that we needed to do some things to perhaps maintain the social atmosphere, because that's very enjoyable, uh, but to, to beef up the uh, amount of actual information that both students and parents leave the evening with. And uh, again, they began uh, working on drawing up plans at that time, worked on it over the summer, and the result of it was uh, last night's uh, ninth grade student parent ice cream social. Uh, we changed the, the uh, fare from hamburgers to ice cream. We went home smelling much better instead of smelling like a grilled hamburger. Uh, we, uh, I don't think we smelled all that bad to leave it <laughs> with ice cream. Uh, and, um, and had much more of a program. We, uh, uh, the, we had uh, uh, half an hour with students and parents together with a kind of a general overview. Uh, and, and then the second half hour, students went to the cafeteria where um, various uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders presented uh, their uh, activities so that students could, ninth grade students could start, excuse me, getting an idea of uh, some of the activities that were available to them. There was some, uh, everything ranging from the, the, the low key approach to the hard sell. Uh, the cross country ski team was losing several, lost uh, I think 12 or 13 seniors, so they had videos, uniforms, uh, uh, the whole, the whole uh, schmear. Um, and then we got all uh, came together then for, uh, for ice cream. And I think uh, I, I haven't had a chance yet to um, talk with uh, a, a great number of people to see how it went, but the early returns certainly were uh, that uh, they thought it was an evening well spent. Uh, the, um, especially those parents who had had an older student uh, and who, who mentioned to me either an email today or, uh, or at the evening last night that, that they really wish that there had been, while they enjoyed the barbecue, they really wish there had been a, a, an evening that had more information to it. One of the byproducts was also, and this is uh, Belinda Snell's work, um, a ninth grade parents handbook which we gave last night. And it's meant to be a very quick reference to some major major forms of communication, phone numbers, uh, e uh, voicemail boxes, uh, website, some dates, that type of thing. And I, uh, several parents that had a, a chance to look at it quickly last night came up to me and said, this is going to be very helpful, uh, you know, because we, we have the other handbook, but that is somewhat ponderous sometimes, and this one is just a very quick look at uh, some of those items. Open House is coming up uh, a week from tonight, on the 21st. We will be following the uh, uh, the uh, somewhat traditional uh, open house approach where uh, parents will be uh, having their sons and daughters fill out their schedule. They've already, the parents have already received the forms that they will need and the information. Their students will fill out their schedule for them and then the parents will go through uh, their sons or daughters schedule in an abbreviated fashion, 10 minutes in class uh, with uh, some passing time. Um, the uh, uh, the, the intent of that evening is very definitely to give a very quick overview of, of the syllabus, the types of expectations um, that uh, the teacher will be uh, uh, having, uh, usually some hints as to how a parent can help their son or daughter uh, succeed in this particular class short of writing the essays. Um, 
And uh, I think it's usually uh, well, well attended and uh, a good evening. Um, th just quickly, uh, one uh, change in policy that we're working with that, uh, uh, or change in practice, I guess, uh, Kevin mentioned paths. Um, we've been looking uh, during this past year at our policy of allowing uh, students uh, to drive to paths, and, and we began evaluating that uh, uh, partially in response to the several accidents that, uh, that happened uh, in the area last year. And we started saying, wait a minute, we don't, we don't allow students to drive to any other type of school activity if we're going to uh, uh, an athletic event or, or the uh, uh, district jazz festival uh, or whatever, even to the point of of the absurd sometimes, students have to come, even if they had, you know, a doctor's appointment in Gorham, the, the uh, meet was going to be at USM, we say, no, I'm sorry, you have to drive back here and then drive back with, uh, with your parents or on the bus one way or the, or the other. And we started asking ourselves, why are we, why are we doing this? Why are we uh, allowing students to drive to pass? So we have begun the process of uh, having all students uh, ride the bus. It has been a rocky road, as you might expect. It's not uh, a favorite uh, policy change of, of the students involved. Obviously, they would prefer to drive, and I understand that absolutely. Um, and to compound it, we have had some scheduling problems, uh, some which were uh, initiated by us trying to shave that time a little bit closer so that students aren't missing too much class at the high school. And uh, and then part, partly caused by experimenting with some uh, bus routes. We wanted to look at different bus routes, and some of those didn't work out very well. So there has been some uh, uh, disagreement with it. Uh, we're trying to ask parents at this point to uh, give us a chance. You know, we've only had really about uh, six days uh, of, of paths, and a couple of those days were the initial days where we realized what some of the problems were. So we're trying to get that sorted out. Uh, asks them to support us in, uh, uh, in, in what I think is a very important uh, move in, in the interest of student safety. I think that's it. Other questions for Pete? Peter, how many uh, students were involved in that situation? Uh, we have, I think this year, uh, I have to check with some schedule uh, changes that have happened in the last couple of days, but I think we have 26 students at PATHS uh, and basically I, I actually don't know which ones of them would have been driving, uh, but usually, I mean, last year if we looked at it, uh, and I think we had 20, at the end of the year, I think we had 24 students going to PAS, uh, and um, I would say that probably uh, uh, 18, 17 or 18 of those were driving, mm. or, or uh, going, riding with someone. Yeah, I, I feel it was a disaster waiting to happen. It is, that's a pretty, uh busy street over there. Yeah. I have trouble getting in and out of the, uh, yeah. the place. Not that I'm necessarily a better driver, but it is no, we, uh, It is a pretty hectic intersection. <coughs> John, did you have a question? Yeah, I wanted to ask, uh, has Sue Richmond returned to her uh, teaching position? Sue, we, we uh, uh, right now, tomorrow morning, first thing, uh, she will be uh, meeting with the doctors and they'll be taking the uh, first look uh, really and, and uh, removing the, 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 I guess I shouldn't go into details, but the, um, uh, she's very hopeful that uh, 10 minutes after she gets out of the doctor's office, she has the car packed and is on her way to, uh, uh, to Cape Elizabeth. And the plan right now is for her to meet with the teacher who has been substituting on Thursday and uh, she's hoping that she will be starting on Friday. It's been a little bit longer than she originally expected. Um, I, I can't say enough how fortunate we were to have a very experienced uh, and uh, uh, outstanding biology teacher to step in so that there's been no loss whatsoever of student time. They haven't been marking time, as it can sometimes be the case in a situation with a substitute. They've, uh, Ms. Adset and, and uh, Sue Richmond have been in constant contact with one another, and the plans have been moving forward. So I think it's uh, as good as it could possibly be, given the situation. Well, I think your news and reference to our health is very encouraging. That was my main concern. I know you'd have superb substitutes, but um more concerned about her we, health and when she'll be able to return. We're, we're eager to, uh, to see her, and, and I think she's, I know that uh, she doesn't rest easily, and, and uh, they keep asking her to rest and take it easy, and she's been chafing at the bit to, to get back. Thank you. 
Other questions? Thanks, Pete. Um, middle school, Nancy Hutton. Good evening. Uh, first, I'd like to say at the last school board meeting, Mr. Rowe, I remember that you were there. You. So um, I certainly will vouch for your attendance. I'm glad to say that we're off to a great start at the middle school. I want to thank all the parents for sending their sons and daughters so eager and ready to learn. It's been a terrific start. And now the students even have that look on their face of, oh no, and we've even got homework. And oh no, I think I've even had a quiz and pretty soon I'm going to have a test. So I would say school is well underway. We've completed our round of curriculum nights. Uh, we had one for the seventh and eighth grade, the second evening of school, and that was very successful. And then last week we had one for the fifth and sixth grade. And I think they went very well. We had good attendance, and I, the comments I heard afterwards is that people found them very informative. We have received a couple of suggestions from families of things that we might try to add in the future to make them even more productive for people. So we'll certainly take all of those into consideration. One of the meetings that we had just before school started, once again to highlight the high school students, they have agreed to come and work with us and be mentors and work with our eighth grade advisory group. And this comes off a project that we started last year with the CAPE Coalition, and once again is really energized by the young people's support and their enthusiasm. And we look forward to getting that underway with a planned meeting of the high school mentors and the eighth grade advisory groups sometime towards the end of September, the 1st of October. We needed just a little bit of time for everyone to go through the schedule, figure out where their schedule is and all of those things, but we look forward to that. And the purpose of that is very simple. It is simply to begin that constructive network of establishing eighth graders having a look at what high school life is like. Um, and it's not because something went wrong, it's really a good idea to do just to help something go even more correctly than one would hope. The other thing I'd just like to share with you briefly tonight is the result of our summer work. Um, during the summertime we had lots of teachers in doing different curriculum work. Some of them worked under um, auspices of our learning results staff development monies, and some of them worked under the auspices of just our staff development monies. But work was done in the area of science, both in the fifth grade, where we had two teachers who worked to connect some new materials we had added to our program on whales and oceanography, to our Voyage of the Mimi program, which is a part of the fifth grade science experience, then connecting that to FOSS and connecting it all to the learning results. Uh, the same two teachers also began to develop some more assessments to use with our FOSS science program. In seventh and eighth grade, we have had a change in personnel there. As if you recall, we have um, several of our teachers departed last year, and we have actually <coughs> four newer teachers, newer to the new Prentice Hall Science program teaching it. Some of them have had a bit of experience. Our most seasoned veteran at that is Stephen Price. And Steve coordinated and led um, his three other colleagues through looking at the materials, getting acquainted with the materials, setting up a sequence of events that would make sense for them, talking about support throughout the year. We are going to arrange to have the science teachers meet once a month to work together and to coordinate that. And much of that comes from a suggestion from a departing science teacher, Cynthia Curry, last year, that one of the things that was missing at the middle school was a chance to have more collaborative work around the curriculum in a content area. We are designed, a lot of our work is designed around grade level teams, and her point was perhaps at times it would be good if we could arrange our schedule to arrive for those content area discussions as well. So that's something that we look forward to. Steve also participates in the main assessment portfolio. He shared that information with all of the teachers. They're going to be looking for some grade level anchor tasks, which will give them some experience in developing those comprehensive assessments connected to learning results. In the area of social studies, um, Bruce Lynn and Gail Parker developed quite a few hyper studio projects for the, to support the fifth grade program in things like Native Americans, Civil War, and um, other subject areas. And in the seventh grade, we have, new, we have new social studies books. And I think every parent of a seventh grader is saying, thank goodness. And those parents of eighth graders are saying, why didn't you get it last year? But we do have them this year. And uh, Ken Plummer, Karen Driscoll, and Deb Casey spent time becoming more acquainted with those materials, once again planning out the sequence of events, working on developing a geography skills unit for that uh, particular subject area, and, of course, connecting it all to the main state learning results. 
The health physical education teachers got together to review last year's work and curriculum and to see the things that they would like to add to it. One of their major areas of focus was to connect with more community resources and they hope to do more work this year with things like the American Red Cross, Family Planning, and the American Lung Association, to name a few. Our world language team worked to um, continue to develop supplementary materials uh, for their students. Much of this, this summer, I believe, was done in the area of grammar. And then, um, and Tom may talk about this as well too, they also worked um, on developing the third grade program. Carmen and three other teachers attended a two-day workshop for the student assistance team, which is one of the programs that we have in place in the middle school under Carmen's leadership to help us make sure we're meeting the needs of all students. And I know that team found that to be very profitable and they've been working and meeting weekly to move forward with their program. The last one we have, um, two new people working in our accelerated language arts program in grades seven and eight with the retirement of Marty Watts. We had an open position. Karen Driscoll is teaching the seventh grade program. Jamie Michaud is teaching the eighth grade program. And this summer, Karen, Jamie, and Margaret Welch, who teaches the accelerated program at grades five and six, got together and did some work to make sure there was a smooth transition from one program to the other, to look over some new materials, and to do some coordinating of their curriculum. Part of Mr. Watts's curriculum in both grades seven and eight had been a half year study in critical thinking logic. Um, we were not able to find um, even courses for Karen and Jamie to attend to become proficient in that. We looked it over as part of our review committee last year and decided we really needed to focus on language arts. So they were developing drama units and other things to fill out the program. Um, they will continue that work throughout the year, but it looks like they've planned an exciting program for all of the students this year. So those are just a few of the things that teachers did over the summer besides rest, um, spend time with their families, and come back energized to meet emerging adolescents for another year. Thank you. Any questions? Questions for Nancy? Is the trip to Camp Kiev at that time frame, is that the, the normal time that you go, late November, early December? It is, John. This will be our second year going to Kiev. So yeah, I guess that would be right along with middle school. If we've done it twice, it must be a whole tradition here. And that is the week that we have. It's the week following Thanksgiving. Uh, when we first went last year, that is the week they have available right now. It's not our first choice of a week. And we are on their long waiting list for getting a week. We'd really like to have a week earlier in October um, to go for our program. But we've got to wait to get on their schedule. And other schools are ahead of us. So for now, we will be returning. And it is the same time frame that we went last year. And you, do you have parents that stay as uh, chaperones in the evening? Uh, no, um, teachers stay as chaperones. The Kiev requires that at least one person from the school stays. We supply at least two. I think this year we will have more than two every single night. Um, they do stay with Camp Kiev counselors in the, in the cabins that they spend with. And the parents go to Kiev on Wednesday. There's a parent day. Um, that they go up for the day. The day starts for them about 10, goes to about 3. Jen, I know you did that last year. And then, and then you can stay and do some afternoon activities, and then there's an evening program. So for parents who can come and stay the whole day, it's tremendous. For parents who can just come from 10 to 3, that's fine. And for parents who could only come for the evening program, that also um, is very stressed to be something that would be wonderful for them to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions for Nancy? I'd like, if you have an interest in going, um, going on that Wednesday, any, any board member, I mean, I think they'd be welcome to attend the Wednesday session. One of the things you'd see in the grandparent and go? Absolutely, absolutely, because one of the things you'll see on that day and what they did last year is they take the asset survey that the Cape, the survey that the Cape Coalition did several years ago, and they build their program around that as they're connected with that same philosophy and that same approach. So it's a wonderful connection for us from the things that we're doing with Cape Coalition, our advisory program, our entire outdoor experience curriculum, and just bringing it all together. And it's a nice way, too, to encourage more parents to get involved in the Cape Coalition activity. So absolutely, any of the board members are welcome. You can go any day. Um, the day that's really designed for other visitors is Wednesday, but you would be welcome to go any day. Nancy, thank you uh, particularly for the uh, update on the summer work. I think that's always important for us to hear. Thanks. Um, and now, um, Pan Cove, Tom. Good 
good evening. It, it always occurs to me sometime in July that there are very few organizations that essentially close down and disperse its members for two months. Mm -hmm. I think professional sports teams do it and schools. So I'm even all the more impressed after a, a two-month layoff that through the efforts of the custodial staff, the uh, transportation department, community services, maintenance, the PCPA, and the teachers, that school is open in such great shape this year. I, I think I've reported to you how much I enjoy the beginning of the year every year because it goes so smoothly. But this year, it seems even more than ever. It's just been particularly good. And I thank everybody for that spirit of cooperation. George mentioned summer work. Uh, in August, we did have uh, teams of teachers, and in one case, it was a uh, team of teachers and parents get together. The social studies committee met, and we were on the verge of formalizing the units of study linked to the learning results K through four, and that will match up with the grades five through eight and nine through 12. We're almost ready to do that. The climate committee met about a week before school opened. This was in response to a variety of things, including feedback from staff development survey about um, teacher concerns, just about everything from manners to um, general respect around Pond Cove. So the, the committee of parents, administrators, and teachers met, and uh, things went so well that we will be meeting monthly from now on during the year. And we've already reported back at least once to the faculty, and that, that seems like that's going really well. The report card committee met. This was a school-wide team. Met for two days, thrashed things around. Um, I think we all knew that the um, report card wasn't really serving anybody's needs at some point. It needed some revision. They uh, came up with a draft at our first uh, faculty meeting after school opened. We looked at it. That was last week. And the opinion of the rest of the faculty was that they had done a terrific job so far. It needs further refinement at each grade level. And we'll be doing that, and we hope to have a draft to share by parent conference time, just so we can let parents know what we're, and you know what we're thinking about this. The K through four reading team that we uh, proposed to you last year, and we were talking about the literacy teacher, went to Orono to get our year started. Just to remind you, that team includes uh, team leaders uh, and including special ed and myself. So we're looking forward to working with a new literacy position and looking at how we can improve literacy instruction at uh, Pond Cove. Just to remind you, and for people who are hearing it the first time, we were unable to fill the literacy vacancy as first proposed, but we have still filled it. It's still a 1.0 position, and I think actually having uh, Suzanne Hamilton and Deborah Jordan Pearson has been a plus. They um, are very professional. Uh, Deborah has, is a veteran and highly respected teacher at Pond Cove. They have already met with uh, the relevant teams, that's K, three, and four, and they're developing a schedule. And you know things are going well when they've come to the administrator and asked for money. That's actually a really good sign. As a small symbol of the community we're trying to build at Pond Cove, everybody, if you've visited Pond Cove, everybody's wearing a name tag. Uh, every every grown-up, every staff member, every child. It's, it's, it's a small thing, but it seems to have a positive effect around the school. Our original commitment was to do it during the month of September. But between grown-ups forgetting and kids being kids, I'm not sure we'll make it that far. But it, it, the place seems a little friendlier, and, I've, and uh, I hear a little more hellos and goodbyes at the end of the day. Uh, I'd like to mention that after a two-year hiatus, we've gone back to a six-day rotation for the four-day Allied Arts. Um, there are pluses and minuses to any schedule, but one thing that this guarantees is there's sort of an equity in the schedule. It's it, nobody gets, nobody will miss an art day, say, if they have art on <coughs> Monday. This is our third week of school on our first Monday. And under the old five-day system, it means that uh, that class would not have had art until the third week of school. This way it goes in succession. I think it's pretty much like the middle schools. The staff is happy with it. They were happy with it before. It just takes some getting used to about which days to bring your sneakers and which day to bring something else. Uh, Nancy mentioned that the, uh, we have already started Spanish in grade three, and I'm, I'm particularly grateful to Nancy for making this arrangement to have Kathleen come. Kathleen has taught French and Spanish in grade four before, and I'm just delighted to have Kathleen there. That has gone extremely well. So thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Kathleen. Marla and I attended the fourth of our five curriculum nights early this evening. Uh, the final one is Thursday night. We're doing them, doing them in succession this year from K to four, which gives me an interesting pers uh, perspective. 
I appreciate the teachers taking the time to come out in the evening and the parents, because all these are well attended and people are attentive and I think they get a lot out of it. But uh, in the years I've been here, I think that's one more reminder of one of Ponco's great strengths. Thanks. Questions, Marie? Tom, could you just um, explain a little more about the um, rotation of the Allied Arts schedule this year? I know I've received um, a telephone call from mm -hmm. Um, a concerned parent who, you know, in your letter that came home, I, I guess it took some people by surprise, or they just didn't understand what it was. Um, could you just explain it a little more? Deeply? Sure. It, it's something we, we talked about, uh, the faculty talked about last spring, and then uh, administrators tend to formalize things over the summer. It just means things, instead of being related to the day, you know, I mentioned art, instead of art always being on a Monday, art falls every six days. It's, Fourth grade parents probably remember, I think the last time that was done, there were parents of first graders. So it, it just goes day one, two, three, four, five, six, like the middle school, and then repeats. The uh, good part, again, is that missed days are made up right away. And if there's a snow day, the same thing happens. The reports from the faculty show that the plus side to be, first of all, an increase in the quality of the allied arts instruction because doing 28 classes in in five days, I think, is, as I've told them, almost inhuman. So uh, the quality goes up. I think there's a little extra time in the period. Um, each faculty member now is guaranteed a planning period, which the Allied Arts team has not had in a while. And just as a gesture of solidarity with their colleagues, the Allied Arts team is doing something, a community project, because they, even though they don't have to, they do five periods a day, and they're picking up extra periods with classes who are available. And they are not only doing this with a smile, but they have uh, embraced this and are doing a community um, project around it. Now, does this mean that they will have any less classes in, throughout the year in any of those allied arts programs? It, it, it'll all be the same. I, I think the minutes turn out to be almost even. So it's, it's comparable. Tom, I had a question. Is it all four grades have the same six allied arts? There are only four. Oh, that's what I meant. There's only four allied right. arts? Well, computer, I know that's not quite it. But it, are they all having community activities or whatever? No, the schedule doesn't allow that. Okay, so what, so they, those grades that don't have that just have a free day for right. a day without right. allied arts? So what grade? You know, second it's, grade it's the only grades available are grades one and two. Uh -huh. And so are both those grades getting that? Some are. And I, I just have one more comment mm -hmm. or a question, and actually this is from a fourth grader um, that I know pretty well. And I promised him that I would ask the question and make a comment. Not Pokemon. No. Uh, Pokemon. <laughs> um, he, actually he came home and said that he heard that, um, you know, Pokemon cards were not going to be allowed in yeah. school as of Thursday. Yeah. And his question was that he wanted to know if it was constitutionally legal. And his comment yeah. you, was actually, that he felt that the kids were learning negotiating <laughs> skills, that they were getting very Although, good at it. Don't make me put my legal hat on. Although the kids do not check their constitutional rights at the door, we have a very conservative Supreme Court these days who says administrators can rule on nuisances. The kids also know that I like them. And now I, I'm reduced to going over to the middle school to talk to the middle school kids about the Pokemon oh, kids, no. yeah, the cards. But uh, in their... I have to say they actually know what they're doing. So it's become a little power struggle with some kids. The other rumor was that this would never happen because the principal likes them. I, oh, I, I betrayed them But it's going to happen. Yeah, but there's still Harry Potter. There are other commercial things to latch on to. Other questions for Tom? Thank you. You're welcome. We're going to move on now to uh, committee reports. Um, the finance subcommittee from earlier this evening, Keith. Well, there's not a lot to report. Uh, we uh, signed the warrants and uh, reviewed the appropriation report. And, uh, that was pretty much it for tonight. We like calm and quiet meetings every That's right. so often. Once that, once was, that was nice. Um, and a report out from the policy subcommittee. Kevin. There is nothing to report from the policy subcommittee, as we will be meeting Thursday at 930 in the William Jordan Conference Room. Uh, to begin our work for the year. At that point, we'll be uh, prioritizing items and uh, looking to our administrators for input and settling on a final date and time 
that we can carve in stone for future meetings. Um, that's it. Okay. I've got a quick question. Can, um, does Tom normally come to those? He does, doesn't he? Yes. 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 Because you're going to the PCPA meeting. There's only going to be three of us at the meeting okay. on Thursday. Okay. Can we kick it back a little bit from uh, 930 to Make it 10? early? Oh, sure. You know, good point. Yeah, we Maybe. can do that. All right. What is that all right with you? All right. Okay. What time is good because we'll make it work. Yeah. We'll it's, well, it's, it's listed on the schedule now as 9.30 p.m. So, so there'll be plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> so you, have, you can go home and eat and you know, take a shower, come back. Um, I think this was 9.30 a.m., right? right? And you're going to move right. that to 10? Well, what, is that enough time for you at the PCPA? I'm assuming I'll be first on the agenda, so. Okay, because that starts at 9.15. Okay. So, 10. That's fine. Okay. Okay, um, unfinished business, and this is consideration of policies. These are all up for a second reading. And um, Kevin, if we could go through these individually, I think they're, they're important policies. Yes, I will. Um, these policies all had their first readings back in June. There were no substantial objections to any of the language in these, although on policy AC, which on the agenda is equal employment opportunity. Keith raised a very good point of, about its original uh, title, which was affirmative action policy. This is, in fact, um, more of an equal employment opportunity policy. I am suggesting that we change the title to that and leave the language as was originally expressed. The language is simply a statement that it says we do not di discriminate and we comply with all state and federal laws um, uh, in, as relates to discrimination. Okay, um, is there a, a motion on this particular policy? Yes. I move Kevin. that we adopt policy AC titled Equal Employment Opportunity Policy. Okay, so uh, just so that the board knows, it would, the, uh, the title that you see on the final draft will, will be revised. It's actually more, as Kevin said. Could I just make a comment? Yes. The reason I left the title as it was uh, for the first reading is because we're required by law to have an affirmative action uh, statement. statement. And the EEO is, that means equal opportunity employment. Uh, so that's why I left it that way because we need, that's why with a slash, because we need that legally to have an affirmative action. If it needs to be revised, then it needs to be revised. We do need to. Well, flip flop it. I, I, a lot of people, the EEO, spell that out, slash, yes. and spell it out. In that event, I will amend my. Uh, that we adopt file AC, um, which would we prefer first, affirmative or equal? Equal. Um, file AC, equal employment opportunity slash affirmative action policy statement. Okay. Seconded? Second the motion. By Jim. Comments from any board members? This is, um, this is a policy, you know, oftentimes when you're doing the right thing, um, things slip by us very quickly. Um, there's been much to do about the kind of changes that this board is making to this policy statement, and I don't want it to go unnoticed. Um, essentially, with our focus on creating a, sur a safe school community, um, it's very important that we be all inclusive. And this policy has moved to being inclusive and goes beyond what is required by the local um, uh, the local uh, law. Um, it does include, um, which it did not include before, um, sexual orientation. And I just think that it's, uh, you know, that rather than kind of going through the process of just sort of affirming this as a new policy, I think it's very important that we all recognize that this is an important policy that we should all feel um, very, um, very good about in terms of the change and uh, the implications in terms of, uh, again, creating a safe, uh, diverse, and, and welcoming environment um, for everyone. 
Other comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Our next policy for a second reading is ACAAA, Harassment of Students. I'll take the opportunity to read this entire uh, policy. Harassment of students by any person or persons is prohibited conduct, is a violation of board policy, and may constitute illegal discrimination under state and federal laws. Harassment includes, but is not limited to verbal and physical abuse, based on race, color, sex, religion, disability, age, appearance, ancestry, national origin, sexual orientation, family, and or marital status. Each building principal or his slash her designee shall develop the necessary administrative guidelines, including a student harassment complaint procedure to implement this policy. The superintendent or his her designee will investigate complaints of harassment in accordance with the student harassment complaint procedure. School employees, students, and parents will be informed of the policy procedure through handbooks and or other means selected by the school administration. Okay, is there a motion? I move that we adopt um, policy ACAAA, harassment of students as written. Second. Thank you. Keith, second. Um, comments or questions about this particular policy? I think, George, that this echoes your comments on mm -hmm. the first policy as the uh, protected classes are all inclusive. Right. It needs a comma after, but is not limited to. Okay. <laughs> we can make that adjustment. I really should submit these to Sally Martin or someone like that, now that she's available. <coughs> Actually, I'm usually pretty good at English. Yes. I'm sorry I missed it. <laughs> it's just I'm a very, typo, Mary. Very it's few things typo. slip by Mary. Mary, yours is just a typo. That's the way I write. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good at those. I think, um, again, it's important, and it, it, these are Im important policies. Um, the most significant thing that the school board does is look at and um, put their hand to, basically, policy and, and again, um, another very important one, um, a big gap um, with this uh, sort of not in place. Uh, we had a, a workshop the other evening with um, MSMA, um, we as board members with the superintendent and Tom ar arranged that and it, it, it was a, a good evening. But the big focus really was on policy and, and um, how big or, uh, and significant a role that policy making um, is to a school board. So uh, um, I guess I, I don't want to um, allow this one to, to sort of slip by unnoticed. It's also one um, that I know as a board member, um, uh, I will um, uh, look to ensuring is, um, is met, um, sort of every, every word of the policy is, um, is adhered to. And uh, I suspect the rest of the board members feel that strongly also. Um, other comments from anyone else? Ditto, George. Um, seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. The next policy, BIA new board member orientation is not a new policy, it's an amendment to an existing policy. We had a situation arise where um, a newly newly elected but not sworn in member of the board had been uh, not invited to an executive session despite the policy that said newly elected but not sworn board members should be invited to executive sessions. In referring this to legal counsel, they inform us that a board member who has been elected but not sworn is not a board member and is not entitled to be privy to the types of information typically discussed in executive session uh, particularly when it relates to personnel or student matters. Um, so we have changed the word including to excluding, and that is the sum total change to this policy and the reason for it. Is there a motion? Jim. Seeing the reason that we're <laughs> discussing this, <laughs> I would move that we... <laughs> I would move that we adopt the uh, change in the policy uh, from in to X. Okay. I'd second that. Seconded. 
um, comments? I would like to apologize to Jim for telling him about this policy. <laughs> Other comments? So we go from inclusive policies to exclusive policies. This one perhaps not as monumental as the two previous ones, just to kind of put some sense of um, perspective here. Um, all those in favor? 7-0. Last policy, Kevin? Last policy we have for consideration tonight is JHB truancy. Um, does anybody feel the need for me to read through the entire policy? Basically, we are required by Maine state law to have a truancy, truancy policy in effect. We have essentially adopted the model from MSMA. Um, I'm sure all of our lucky administrators have a copy of this and will be working to implement the requirements of this policy. Um, with that said, I would move that we adopt policy JHB truancy. Okay, in a second. Jim, question. Uh, do we currently have attendance coordinators appointed by the different administrators, or is that something that's going to take place in the future once this is passed? We, um, I believe that we, we do, and we can, we can um, be affirmed of that by the principals. Is that correct? That there are attendance coordinators or someone identified as overseeing attendance. Assistant, assistant principals in each of the schools. Um, other questions, comments about this policy? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? That's seven zero. Okay, we move out of unfinished business into new business, and we start with uh, consideration of the superintendent's nominations to athletic fee positions for fall of 99. Under athletics, there are uh, two pages and they are all middle school recommendations and I'd like to, if I could, do all the uh, athletics at one time. There are three nominations. Uh, one is Scott Labby, a seventh grade boys soccer, uh, Laura Freddy as eighth grade field hockey, and Jerry McQueenie as middle school assistant cross country. Okay. Is there a motion? Jim. I move that we uh, Confirm the uh, nominations for the new coaching positions as read. Second. Second. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> little little com competition uh, uh, over the side. Um, any questions or comments about these nominations from the superintendent? No, just to note that we still have uh, a position, I guess, to be filled. And um, what 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 is that? Well, uh, assistant cross country. We're still looking for that. No, no, that's the one that's that's okay. Seventh grade field hockey? Seventh grade, seventh field, grade field hockey. Is that still to be filled? How's that looking, Keith? How's seventh, seventh grade. grade field hockey looking? Well, it's pretty good, I guess. <laughs> well, what's happening right now is there are, there are only eight seventh graders uh, field okay. hockey. There are about 19 eighth graders, and Laurie Freddie's been working with both of them. So they are playing, we're still looking for somebody to help them, but right now she's very comfortable with working with uh, both groups of kids. We'll still play uh, seventh grade games. Uh, I've talked to the other schools and we'll play some eighth graders and seventh grade games and they'll swap off each time so that uh, they all get the opportunity. So right now it's working all right. Okay, thank you. Other comments or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0, moving on to consideration of the superintendent's nominations to co-curricular fee positions for 99-2000. In looking at a, a way, if I could take it page by page maybe, uh, it would make more sense, but there are a number of positions that are under, especially the um, uh, teacher mentors. I'd like to start with the nominations, uh, co-curricular uh, positions at the high school. And that would be Lacey Goodrich for Visual Arts, Kate Robinson, Yearbook Advisor, Norman Richardson, Jazz Band One, Anthony Morrow, Jazz Band Two, and Kathy, Han Kathy Hamble, Sophomore Class Advisor.
Do you want to, want to continue the list? Do you want me to go do all, yeah. the, all of them? Yeah, we've, we've had a, an opportunity to review them. Uh, I also have a nomination for special education team leader, uh, and that is Tom Robinson. You have a list um, of co-curricular mentor teachers. Is there a need to read them? No. And also a nomination for high school theater, Peter Bloom. And lastly, you see this evening, in addition, we have at the uh, middle school Elliott Arts team facilitator, Aiden Atwood, debate, Lyle Kramer, student council, Deb Ring, and French Spanish, Kathleen Reba, and Suzanne Janelle. Okay. Is there a motion? Did he read the jazz band? And yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Keith. I move we accept the uh, superintendent's recommendations as listed for co curricular fee positions. Seconded. Second. Marie. Qu uh, questions on any of these? They're all open to questions, though we've uh, sort of put them all together. Any questions or comments? This includes the mentors? Correct. It does include the list of mentors that you have. Seeing no questions, all those in favor? Seven zero, and we'll move on to continued new business. Uh, superintendent's nomination to fill a, a teacher's vacancy, a teacher va vacancy for ninety nine two thousand. And the recommendation is for Lori Sivanen, who will serve as a special education teacher at the middle school. Um, a motion. I move we accept the superintendent's nomination to fill teacher vacancy in special education. Okay. Second? Second. Jim, thanks. Um, comments or questions about uh, Lori's uh, nomination? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Um, move on to a approval, or I guess a, a request for approval to receive and spend all federal and state grants for 99 2000 school year. This is um, fairly standard business that we do each year. The requirement is just to have a motion that we, allows us to do that. That we do that. Keith, you want to make that motion? I can make that motion. I move that we approve to receive and spend all federal and state grants for the 1999 2000 school year. In a second, Marie. Any questions about this motion? Comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. And then, uh, last on under new business is a report on new regulations regarding uh, providing special education services to children in, in private schools. And under this, I've asked Claire to share. There are some changes in this uh, law, and how, and also share with you how we are handling it this year and mm -hmm. maybe how we might handle it in the future. Yeah, we're all excited about the beginning of the school year, and we're all anxiously awaiting our new state special ed regulations. They still have not come out, but the one change that's going to bring um, some discussion to the table is how we've been providing special education services for children who are either being homeschooled or in private schools. In the past, and we're operating the same way this year as we have in the past is that we were um, held responsible to provide services at the public schools for children that had been identified as having a disability, had an IEP, even if they were attending the private schools or being homeschooled. When the federal regulations were reauthorized in 1997, Congress uh, clearly defined what the obligations were of the public schools to provide special education services to that population of students. Um, it is uh, their intention that we take a percentage of the federal monies that we receive and use that pool of money to provide services. And once that pool of money is expended, we uh, would be done that year providing services to that population. Um, this could have some uh, budget implication, and I think at budget time it would be a good idea if we discuss how Cape Elizabeth would like to do, con how we would like to address that. Do we want to continue as we have in the past, or do we want to uh, determine that we are only going to be providing services using that pool of money, and then once it's spent, um, parents know that that's it for the year. 
Claire, will we have an option? I mean, are, are we given an option to do other than what's? We can always do term? above and beyond. Above and yes. beyond, okay. And right now, where we stand is that we have budgeted the money to provide the services. And the decision that we made, and it was the appropriate one to make at the time, since the state regulations are not yet out, we determined that we were uh, supposed and expected to provide services like we had in the past, because the state regs, the old ones, supersede the federal regs. And that's what we're doing, and I think it, it was the right thing to do, because last spring, when we had annual reviews on that, on for those students, the parents were led to believe that the services would be like they had been in the past, and they made decisions based on that information. And we received, as part of the packet, uh, the board packet, um, the memo that you had um, developed on this topic. Do you have any questions on it, or are you all set? Claire, um, what's this, the overall status of uh, state special ed regs and is your professional organization doing anything to uh, push that issue right now the state regulations are sitting on the commissioner of, Educa of education's desk and they need to be approved by he and the attorney general if there is no movement on the regs within the next week that means that whole process would need to be reopened where there would have to be public hearings Com uh, comments solicited from the public and so forth. So I've been waiting for some information as the main case president to know whether to start beginning contacting our legislators to mm -hmm. get the ball going. Thank you. I won't editorialize at this point, but maybe somebody should remind them we have people to educate. There's um, any questions for Claire? Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's really no action required on this. It's uh, actually more a communication item. Um, before we move on to uh, consideration of the request, superintendent's request to enter executive session for the purposes of developing guidelines um, for his uh, um, performance evaluation, I'd like to remind, some, uh, remind you of some of the important dates that are upcoming. Um, one that is very important, and we hope that you all I know you all will have, those who are sitting here will have it on their calendar, but we would encourage um, parents and community members um, to put it on their schedule and calendar. It's September 28th um, of, uh, in a couple of, couple of weeks, I guess. September is slipping by. It's gonna be at 7 p.m. and it is in the high school library and it is a, um, a reception um, that is being sponsored by the school board uh, to welcome our new superintendent Tom Fasella, and also to welcome our new staff uh, to, the, to our school community. And uh, it is a, a community um, activity, uh, and, uh, and everyone is invited. Also coming up is the policy subcommittee meeting on October 7th. Uh, the time has changed from 9.30 to 10 a.m., and that's gonna be in the William Jordan Conference Room uh, here in this building. Uh, and then uh, our regular meeting meetings for October um, are on October 12th, and it starts with the Finance Subcommittee at 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room, um, followed by our regular school board meeting at 7.30 p.m. here in the Chambers. Now I'd like to move on to consideration of the superintendent's request to enter executive session to develop guidelines for the superintendent's evaluation, and we will not be coming back into public session after that executive um, meeting. Is there a motion? I would move that we honor the uh, superintendent's request to enter executive session. And a second. Jen, thank you. Discussion or questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.